welcome to the biggest dining guide we've ever put together. Celebrity Cruise's reputation for quality dining is already widely known, but will their brand new flagship Celebrity Beyond live up to the enormous hype? We have eaten everywhere, and I mean everywhere on this ship, and we've filmed it all for you in beautiful Ultra HD. You won't find a more comprehensive or stunning look at Celebrity Beyond's dining anywhere but here. In this video, we're going to cover the eateries included in your fare. Cyprus, Tuscan, Normandy and Cosmopolitan restaurants, the Spa Cafe, the Ocean View Cafe, Eden Cafe, the Mask Grill, Cafe El Baccio and room service. We will also show you the premium dining options too, including Le Voyage, Le Petit Chef, Eden Restaurant, Rooftop Grill, Fine Cut Steakhouse, Raw on 5 and the elusive Magic Carpet Experience. There's so many dining options on board, we want to make sure you are ready to choose what's right for you. Speciality dining on Beyond is expensive compared to celebrities' rivals, so we'll give you what you need to make the right choices. If this video is helpful, please like and subscribe because we've got a ton of other Celebrity Beyond videos we can't wait to show you. All that's left is to say bon appetit and let's visit our first restaurant. We start this journey on what I crudely refer to as the main dining rooms on Celebrity Beyond. These four venues are situated together at the aft of the ship on decks 3 and 4 and are accessible by this elegant two-storey lobby. All are open from 5.45 till 9pm each evening, with Cosmopolitan also open for breakfast and lunch each day. This could vary on your cruise, of course. They are Cyprus, a Greek-themed restaurant, Tuscan, which is Italian-themed, Cosmopolitan, which is American, and Normandy, which is French. Ooh la la! Each restaurant is designed elegantly and distinctly from each other to feel you are visiting not a huge busy main dining room seen on other ships, but smaller, more delicately focused eateries. However, each menu has three starters and main dishes which are specific to the restaurant's theme, and these stay the same throughout the cruise. There are then the celebrity classic dishes which also stay the same throughout the cruise. Then there is the menu that changes every day and is the same across all restaurants. <laughs> With me so far? Hmm. Good. Overall, there are usually five choices for starter and main. For desserts, there is one that is a local speciality, some classic dishes, and some that are changed each evening across all of the restaurants. So, not quite as individual as first thought, but different enough to justify their intentions. As I've been speaking, I hope you've seen that the food here is excellent, and as it's all included in your fare, well, it tastes all the better for it. The all-day buffet-style venue is at the aft of the ship on deck 14 and is called the Ocean View Cafe. If you enter on the port side, you'll find Scoops, the included ice cream station with its own little seating area. Lovely. In keeping with all celebrity ships, there are small island stations in the central area with two long hot sections at the front and rear of the serving area. Each station serves something different depending on the time of day and the meal being served. The seating area flanks both sides of the serving stations and spills out into a lovely open Wakeview terrace at the rear. Breakfast is served from 6am till 11am and offers usual hot and cold food with an eggs as you like them and a pancake station amongst other things. Lunch is served from noon to 2.30 with a pizza station at the rear of the venue serving pizzas all day from noon till 1am. Lunch and dinner are often themed and usually reflecting the region you are sailing in and dinner is served from 6 till 9 p.m. with late night snacks from 10 to 1 a.m. Although we normally avoid buffets on larger cruise ships due to them being always a bit too busy for our liking, the Ocean View Cafe on Celebrity Ships has to be one of the best organized buffets at sea. We rarely get caught up in the queues or crowds and love the individual stations which spread the guests out and are also easy to navigate. While we're on the subject of cafes, they seem to be everywhere you look on Celebrity Beyond. Here's the three others in order of our preference. In third place is the Spa Cafe, the healthy dining snack bar which is located next to the Solarium Indoor Pool. It serves breakfast from 7 till 10am and lunch from noon till 2pm, as well as smoothies and artisan detox juices and the like. All the food is small plate style, and if you're looking for a light but delicious alternative to a full meal, this is it. In second place of our top three is K 
Café El Baccio. Situated in the heart of the central plaza, this coffee bar is perfect for grabbing a hot drink before or after leaving the ship, as well as a hot drink before bedtime. The drinks all have an extra charge, but the little food counter is included and serves absolutely delicious little pastries, snacks, cakes and sweet treats. We love stopping here for a morning coffee and mini pastry before we head out for the day, and again when we return for a refreshing iced coffee and a cookie. Oh, and again, and again, and several times during the day, every day. Our very favourite cafe on board Celebrity Beyond is... Drumroll please. Eden Cafe. This little cafe area is just to the left of the entrance of Eden, which dominates the aft of the ship. It has a few cafe style tables in an area outside the serving area indoors, and some lovely seating on the terrace out to the side, although there is no shade here, so if the sun's there and it's hot, <laughs> it's going to be hot. The lunch food here seems very healthy with some delicious pre prepared salads, sandwiches, wraps, and paninis. While the savoury dishes felt quite healthy, the desserts were a different story, with large slabs of delicious brownie, rich chocolate cake, and my favourite of the cruise, banana bread on offer. The food is nothing short of magnificent. Where else can you get a Chateaubriand and salad in rye bread sandwich? Yes, Chateaubriand. I even convinced Desi, the wonderful waitress there, to give me some extra slices of meat to have with my sandwich while Helen's was accompanied with a lentil, kale, quinoa and chicken salad. On our voyage it was open every day from noon till 1.30 for lunch and breakfast only on sea days, which was just one on our voyage. So you've got to be on the ball and remember because this really is the best kept secret on board beyond. To top it all off, there is no additional cost for the food here. Please, I urge you to put this in your culinary plans. It's too good to miss. Well, we've nearly covered all the included dining on Celebrity Beyond, but there's just a few more to explore before we enter the magnificent but costly world of the premium dining experiences. Keep watching, we've eaten a lot of food and we've got a lot more to show you. So the best of the rest of the included dining brings us to Mast Grill. Located on the front of the main pool, this is open from 11.30 till 6pm every day, serving hot dogs, burgers and fries with a variety of toppings perfect for those sunny days around the pool. This is also a place to get self-service soft serve ice cream, with the flavours changing every day. The area itself is sheltered from the elements with a number of cafe style seats, tables and chairs set out to enjoy a crafty lunchtime burger, whatever the weather. Moving inside and worth a mention is the Craft Social Bar, which is a sports bar where you can purchase beer flights and posh pub grub while you watch the game unfolding on this huge screen. The last included dining is of course room service. Breakfast is ordered using a traditional hanger or by phoning when required. We ordered breakfast to be delivered at 8am and on the dot of 8 we had a phone call to let us know that our food was on the way. We really appreciated the call to make sure we were up and decent before the food actually arrived at the door. We had no time to sample the lunch or evening options for room service because well, have you seen what we had to fit into 9 nights? Here's a quick look around the menu instead. Now, before we move on to premium dining, we were fortunate enough to be staying in suite class on board Celebrity Beyond, and so we were able to also cover all the dining available only to aqua and suite class guests. Dining includes the exclusive Lumini and Blue restaurants, the Retreat Bar and the Retreat Lounge, but we won't cover them in this video. Instead, watch out for our Retreat and Suite Class review, which will cover all those delicious options and more. Okay, so now we've come to the more interesting part of the dining guide if paying for premium dining is your thing. Celebrity Beyond has eight, yes, eight delicious options to tempt your hard-earned cash from the safety of your bank accounts, and we're going to show you them all. We can't rank them because everyone has different tastes and opinions, so we'll show you them in a totally random order, and apologies for some of the footage being a bit flickery. The LED lighting used in some of the venues frustratingly didn't want to comply with any of my camera's shutter speed adjustments. 
please be assured that none of the flickery culprits are distinguishable to the naked eye in real life. Well, we're going to start with our very first premium venue of the cruise, Le Voyage, by Chef Daniel Bouloud. Chef Daniel is Celebrity's global culinary ambassador, and this is his first signature restaurant, so naturally, it's one of the most expensive. The interior was designed by the same duo who created the Grand Plaza, saint gilles Mancou and Patrick Jouin, although, disappointingly, there's no window, so no lovely sea views. We started the evening with a complimentary glass of moe as we perused the menu and enjoyed an amuse-bouche of pureed aubergine with pomegranates and a little flatbread crisp. For appetizers, Helen had the onion tart with a cheese foam and an apple salad and I chose the king crab salad, which was a work of art, accompanied by a glass of Provence rosé. For entrees, Helen had the poulet dish, which was the most succulent and tasty chicken breast she said she'd ever eaten, served with a delicious morel mushroom sauce and little potato balls. I had the filet mignon which was cooked to perfection and served with onion crisps, a truffle sauce and a potato dauphinoise, accompanied by a glass of Tuscan red. For desserts, Helen chose the raspberry and lime pavlova served with a delicious raspberry sorbet, while I had the chocolate dish which was served with a hot chocolate pouring sauce. Both were almost too beautiful to eat, but we managed, just. To finish off our meal, we both had a hot drink which was served with a plate of petit four and a lovely little basket of warm madeleines flavoured with a hint of lemon and orange. This was a great start to our premium culinary journey. Next door to Le Voyage is Le Grand Bistro, a venue inspired by the classic bistros of France, complete with its own boulangerie. For a 30 US dollar per person cover charge with a special plat de jour every day. Unfortunately, we just couldn't squeeze this in in the time we had on board. However, in the evening, Le Grand Bistro transformed into the Le Petit Chef, which is a set time single seating experience with a video show projected onto the table and plate set before you. Celebrity's website says, it's an immersive fusion of animation, entertainment and dining like nothing you've experienced before. Well, they're not far wrong there. The show began with a short history of the food followed by the starter a delicious heirloom tomato tart. When everyone was finished, there was a short gap before the next show on the art of food, which was followed by the next course, a delicious lemon-flavored poached shrimp on a cucumber salad. Next up was a cute little video featuring Le Petit Chef's grandmother, which was followed by the main course, a melt-in-the-mouth piece of braised short rib of beef with a bone marrow jus. The last video was about the flavor combinations of food, which was followed by the dessert of strawberry Napoleon. Although the menu is set here, there is an alternative dish for each course, and with me being a chocoholic, I swapped out the Napoleon for a chocolate dessert. The whole experience took about an hour and a half, and although it's a bit of a gimmick, it's still an entertaining way to dine, although you'll only want to do it once per voyage. Now, we raved about the cafe, and now we're going to rave about the restaurant. Yes, I'm talking about Eden. Who doesn't love a wake view? We adored the wake view at the Tuscan Grill on Celebrity Eclipse, and Celebrity wasn't about to sacrifice that on the New Edge class. We grabbed a table for two by the wake view window, and Desi, remember her, the Chateaubriand sandwich making marvel from the cafe, walked us through some of the popular choices from the extensive menu. We were then presented with a delicate amuse bouche, and I've got to mention the bread. It's simply unbelievable. If there was to be only one type of bread you could eat for the rest of your life, then please let it be this one. To begin, we chose the sheep's milk gnocchi in a parmesan and bacon sauce, which was light as air. And Helen eats a lot of gnocchi, and she said this was the best she'd ever had in her life. And we don't say that lightly either. I had the jumbo lump crab cake, which was the complete opposite. Well, it wasn't light. It was dense and crabby. There is an open kitchen in Eden and our wonderful waiting team made sure to call us over when the chefs were preparing our dishes so we could see them being plated up. Well, and film them, of course. For mains, we chose the beef and the lamb dishes. The beef dish was a filet mignon with a beef cheek en croute served on a bed of velvety mash with a delicious beef jus. The lamb dish was a large loin of lamb coated with a herby crust served with an apple and foie gras side which complemented the lamb perfectly, adding a delicious sweetness to the dish. For dessert, Helen chose the chocolate decadence which was a little half moon of perfectly glazed chocolate mousse served with a quenelle of pistachio cream. I had the lemon tart which was an open tart with drops of lemon and cream and a chocolate disc served on a pastry biscuit 
and simply beautiful to look at. As if we weren't full enough, we finished the meal with a lovely two-tiered plate full of petit four, including truffles, macarons and madeleines. Oh my goodness. Overall, this was our favourite premium dining experience. The setting, the service, the food, the wine, everything was perfect. And we don't often say that, believe me. If you only book one, book this. Time for something completely different, and we present to you fellow gastronomes the Sushi Bar Raw on Five. Situated off the Grand Plaza, the menu is the same for both lunch and dinner, so it's the perfect one to dip into at lunchtime like we did if you've run out of evenings, like we did. We sat at a lovely little table at the window with a gorgeous view out to sea and ordered a Japanese lager and a glass of Prosecco. Our lovely waitress Michelle helped us to choose some dishes to share and we started with some chicken ginger gyoza served with a spicy sesame sauce. Absolutely divine. Then we ordered eight Alaskan California rolls with plenty of delicious soft crab meat in them. Alongside this we had a plate of sashimi with three different types of tuna, two white, one red, I can't remember the technical names, and some salmon. We watched these being prepared by the sushi chef at the counter near the entrance and the presentation of the sashimi was very pretty. Raw on five charges by the dish, so you can have as much or as little as you wish. With that in mind, we felt it was a really nice lunchtime venue, although it's only open for lunch on sea days, so check those out when planning your visit. Now, the rooftop garden is such a unique and well thought out space on board the Edge class ships, and so naturally it should have its own alfresco dining venue. And it does. The rooftop garden grill, built into a contemporary conservatory-like structure, in keeping with the whole Kew Gardens vibe. No sooner had we sat down and our fabulous sommelier came over and convinced Helen to try a strawberry margarita, while I had a glass of red wine called Roxanne, from bendy tantric pop rock legend Sting's own Tuscan vineyard. Let's hope the rooftop garden grill doesn't have to put on a red light this evening. I already told Helen that she didn't have to wear that dress tonight, but she insisted. Okay, that's enough puns or you'll be sending out an SOS in a message in a bottle. We chose the sliders and cauliflower with minced lamb starters, but our wonderful waiter also brought us the crudité to nibble on while we waited. With regard to our waitress, every little thing she did was magic. Next up, we had chosen the half chicken glazed in barbecue sauce and the hickory smoked beef brisket, which we had with fries, mac and cheese, and special barbecue beans. It was all delicious, but more amazing was the sunset view we had over the aft of the ship and the fields of gold of Villa Franche with the red glow of the sun setting over the mountains. Very romantic. We were both so full, I was the king of pain, but we were delighted that my chosen dessert would take 10 minutes to prepare. As the skies darkened to an invisible sun, we waited for our s'mores jar and cookie and ice cream desserts. They were both amazingly delicious, and for the cheapest specialty restaurant, this proved a real hit. When our meal was finished, we simply moved from the restaurant to the lounge seating in the Sunset Bar, which was glorious. With a warm, balmy evening and clear skies, we enjoyed a drink there before having a late night wander around the gorgeous outside decks at night. With their beautiful lighting and the little hidden seating areas, we felt like we had the whole ship to ourselves. Although we could have felt so lonely, we actually felt like we were walking on the moon. Sorry. I had my fun, and if there's too much information so far, I'll be brief on the next premium choice, the Fine Cut Steakhouse. This popular venue returns on Celebrity Beyond, and its location is off the Grand Plaza, and is perfect with the restaurant spilling into this lovely bright glass house area, which is where we sat. We started with some lovely brioche-style bread and parmesan breadsticks while we chose our starters. I chose the tuna tatar, the young'uns had the signature crab cake, and Helen the ricotta gnocchi. For mains, we all had filet mignon, which came in two sizes. We opted for family-style dining and shared a variety of side dishes between us, particularly loving the tater tots, parmesan fries, and mac and cheese. For dessert, two of us chose the cheesecake and two the double chocolate brownie. Mmm, that was good. It was another great meal, although a steakhouse is pretty much a steakhouse and we think all the top cruise lines we have experienced tend to offer similar choices, a similar quality, but with a more affordable cover charge. Now there's one speciality dining experience that's not got a book now button on the celebrity website. It's not mentioned many places and only happens once per voyage if conditions are right and you're lucky. 
It's also the most expensive at a whopping 129 US dollars per head. This elusive experience takes place on the magic carpet which is raised to deck 14 for the evening when the ship is overnighting somewhere to allow only 40 guests the chance to dine al fresco with this unique view. 40 guests out of 3,260. Hmm, you can see why they don't advertise it much. The set menu is extensive so make sure you turn up hungry. We started with a delicious charcuterie board of meats and cheeses alongside a small burrata, a pot of honey and some blanched almonds. We ate our way through this board of food and the sun started to set over the sea creating a gorgeous golden glow around the venue. Next up was a seafood platter consisting of half a dozen oysters, king crab claws, large shrimps and lobster tails accompanied by a spicy tomato sauce and a traditional seafood sauce. The dish alone would have cost a fortune in London or Paris or New York. Hmm, it was very special. By now the sun was getting very low in the sky and it couldn't have been more romantic. Eating oysters accompanied by a crisp cold white wine and watching the sun set from our elevated unobstructed al fresco viewpoint. Already feeling pretty full it was now time for the entrees which was where it went a bit well unusual. It was a single plate consisting of a piece of sea bass, half a lobster and some slices of Chateaubriand, accompanied by a side plate of vegetables. It just felt a bit odd to have all these on the same plate. I mean I suppose you could loosely call the lobster and beef a surf and turf, but the sea bass was a puzzling addition. All three were utterly delicious, but we found it all a bit condensed, given the luxurious and hurried first two courses. The dessert was also a confusing trio of a small pastry, a delicious chocolate cigar and a mango pot with a mousse on top hiding a creamy rum drink underneath. Hmm, while the chocolate cigar was rich and moorish, the other two we felt were not particularly up to scratch given the hefty cover charge. A shame and a missed opportunity. There are so many incredible dessert choices on board this ship and you've seen most of them here, but regrettably, this wasn't one of them. The Magic Carpet is an exclusive but pricey experience and we'd recommend it only for culinary completists or if the cover charge doesn't cause your eyes to water. It's great, but given its stupendous setting, it needs to be better than great. On that bombshell, we hope you've enjoyed this guide and it's given you some useful information with which to make your choices. Please let us know in the comments which ones you chose on your voyage. Here's some more of our celebrity videos to watch too. Hmm, thank you.